So why would you pick a $3,000 sling bag over a $300 sling bag? Or maybe just get one from Muji that's less than hundred bucks. Well, let's talk about that in this video. Okay, well, first off, I must tell you that I bought this Goyard. I've had four versions of this Goyard uh, Belvedere now in the GM size. So there's two sizes, there's the PM and then there's the GM. This is the bigger one, which is the GM size. I've had the yellow one, which is the one that my mom bought and I inherited it um, or I kind of nicked it from her. And I bought two more during the COVID season when the prices were low. And then I thought that, you know, that it's too small for my liking and I ended up selling both of them off of the open market. Unfortunately, Goyard just went bonkers and the price went up really, really fast. I later uh, regretted that decision. So I rebought this later and my wife actually helped me pre-order it from another store and managed to get my hands on it. A sling bag that I always come back to. Now, of course, I do love nice stuff. So if you don't like that kind of stuff, this might not be the video for you and that's all right. But if you like nice stuff, nice things, nice watches, nice cars, nice brands, I would say that I've been looking for the perfect sling bag of a variety of luxury brands. And I really can't find anything that comes close to this one in terms of pricing, functionality, and looks. So of course, whenever uh, someone is looking to buy a luxury item, if you think about it, it's more of the looks and the aesthetics and as well as the reputation that comes along with that brand. Back then, it was a pretty boutique brand. Not that many people use it and it was popular amongst a small group of celebrities and stars and actors back in the days. I remember buying my first Goyard close to 10 years back. So almost a full decade that I've been buying uh, their products. And back then, their classic pouch, which you see in the other video that I talk about, my $8,000 everyday carry. That pouch, back then, I remember remember it being actually less than $1,000. And if you look at the retail price right now, this same pouch, uh, the Senate pouch is more than $1,000 and the price has increased quite a lot. And of course, from inflation, cost of labor and whatnot. But anyways, the whole point was that it used to be a very boutique brand. And one of the reasons that it stood out to me was that this whole painting, the canvas is actually hand painted in France. Now, of course, they've managed to keep the quality pretty high throughout. I haven't seen any reduction in the quality. However, there has been improvements of design and as well as more models that Goyard have released over the years. And I must say that they have gotten more functional compared to the previous ones. Now, if you wanna take a look at the history of Goyard, there's plenty of resources, there's plenty of resources out there, or maybe if you wanna hear their history here on this channel, let me know as well. I'm still trying to figure out what you guys like to watch. Just back to the functionalities. As you can see, there's you know this front flap that just covers down, and it's actually pretty simple to close and open, which is important for me as a dad because I'm carrying my son with me, sometimes I'm out, and I wanna make sure that my bag is secure but it also allows me to take anything that I need out of it as quick as possible. Nothing wrong with a zipper bag, which the Grams have, which is a zipper, but I just find that after using both for a period of time, especially this one and this one that I've been using lately, I find that I've been using more of the Goyard than the Grams. Now, the whole point is that this is supposed to be a bag that is simple, aesthetic, luxurious, because this brand is pretty expensive, it's not a cheap bag. 10 times the price of this one, and it's also really, really nice. Now, it's also not something that's a bit hard to get your hands on because if you walk into a store, it's most likely that a Goyard store will not have this in stock immediately all the time. So you just kind of have to like hope, kind of like get lucky for you to actually end up with a simple black Belvedere bag in this size. Now, the popular size of the Goyard is actually the PM size, which is actually a bit smaller than this. I'll drop a link, a picture of how it looks. It's just a bit smaller. And you can see the difference between the distance of these flaps to this buckle here. So it's like around that size, which is also a convenient size for people who might not have quite a lot of stuff. So what can you fit in here? You can actually fit an iPad. You can fit basically almost every single thing that you saw in my everyday carry bag, the $8,000 pouch. It goes straight in here as well. But the bonus is that because there's a back pocket as well, which you can keep your quick use 
items when you have it slung over your body. Basically, you like that, and you can have quick access items here, perhaps something that is not so expensive or pricey that you won't mind dropping off, uh, perhaps some tissue. Sometimes I have my name cards at the back. Uh, sometimes I have some tissue paper just for cleaning. Sometimes I just put my sunglasses at the back as well, which is pretty convenient. Now, of course, inside there's plenty of pockets and room to keep your items. There's two internal pockets inside. It fits almost everything that I need. In terms of the looks and I guess the brand aesthetic, reputation, or basically if you're trying to impress someone and you're trying to look rich, then of course the Goyard wins it on that side. And I think it's a really good mix and match between luxury, function, uniqueness, which is something that I always look for when I'm buying a piece of luxury item. It should be something that I can use often. It's loud, but not too loud. This might be too loud for some of you. So far, if I'm wearing something plain, I think this bag goes really, really well. So as I mentioned, it's canvas, it's leather. Those are the two main materials that's used on this bag. The yellow one that my mom has, she's had it for close to 10 years now as well. It's still in really, really good condition. So they do age really nicely and they are more durable than they look. I'm not a person who use luxury brands really like carefully. It means that I just buy it and I intend to use them mainly. So that's also important for me. I don't plan, you know, that this is gonna appreciate, you know, to like $6,000 uh, or $8,000 in one day. Unlike some ladies who are collecting Hermes bags, uh, which appreciates over time. All due respect to them and much love to them as well. I think that's really, really awesome. On to the Grams 28. Now, as you guys probably have seen, uh, Grams has actually been kicking uh, movements in the past, I guess, a uh, couple months and years. They do an amazing job with their built quality as well as the materials that they use. I must say that I'm really impressive with the functionality of this bag. You know, uh, you can look at, at their website and they, and they show you what can actually fit inside. There's plenty of amazing reviews and pictures that you can find. I found that for simplicity's sake, if I'm trying to like, you know, just keep my mind free of clutter, I feel like this is like easier to use for my simple mind. It's not to say that the grams is not good value. I would say that this is an incredible bag for someone who might not have so much to think about like me because I do run a couple of companies and businesses. We have a family. I have a lot of things that's on my head. I tend to want to do a lot. So sometimes having a lot of pockets and a functionality that is inside the bag makes me kind of like, it adds a bit more friction for me personally. It's not a bad thing and it's actually very, very functional and I would highly recommend anyone to try and get your hands on it if you can. I think it's very value for money with the price being 10 times less than this one. And the leather is actually very, very impressive. When you look at the pictures and you feel and touch the real thing, it feels a lot better than how it looks. And I think this is really important. My wife has a black Hermes Lindy bag, which the leather is very similar to the one on this one. So they have really picked some really high quality leather just as advertised. I must give it to them on that one. Who is this for? I think this is for anyone who wants a nice, clean, sleek sling bag that you can use on a daily basis. Unfortunately, it is too small for actual laptop. So if I'm using my 13 inch laptop, then I have to carry it with me when I'm using this, which doesn't really make sense if I'm carrying my son as well in my other hand. So that's a bit, uh, you know, weird. But if I'm using this on a travel trip, when if perhaps I'm traveling to a country where uh, it might not be such a good idea to use a luxury brand as my main sling bag. I think this would look really, really sleek and would be a great option for anyone who's traveling. Some other options, the head porter, which is one of my favorite sling bag to use. It's kind of like a belt bag or uh, what you would call like a fanny pack. And this was limited edition bag that I got from Headquarter Japan. I think this was from their Tokyo stores. It's special because usually this model comes in full black, but this one actually has olive accents, which is really, really cool. Usually I carry my bag on my left shoulder and it goes like this, but I realized that actually the Japanese, they carry their bags like this on their right shoulder. So I learned that later and it makes more sense to carry it like this when you're actually using it day by day. So that's another option. This is actually less than $300 when I bought it or it might be around 300 as well. And of course, this one is water resistant. It's pretty durable and it's soft, it's light and it can fit more than it looks. Like you can really pack a lot of stuff in here. Unfortunately, it won't fit an iPad, but it can 
can fit like a water bottle, you can fit like phones, your wallets and stuff like that. This is no problem and your passports and stuff like that as well. So great for travel. And then of course, there's also this very classic popular head porter belt bag. Um, it's a nice and small. There's actually a couple versions of this one. There's uh, this size and there's one that's a bit bigger and also smaller if I'm not wrong. It has a simple front part and as well as a back part. So if you are in the market for some head porter stuff, I think they have some really awesome, cool looking, functional and as well as sleek and clean looking. And the idea about head porter is that they're not like a luxury brand, but it's also not like a too much of a mass market brand. So I think for people who know or are into like streetwear and street fashion, head porter is definitely a brand that comes out of that tribe there and I think it's unique. It's not something that you can get off the shelf easily. There's not that many stores that carry it. Most of the place that has the widest selection is in Japan. That also adds exclusivity, you know, if you want to stand out and be unique from the rest. But yeah, that's just a few of the options out there. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy that. And if you want more of this type of content covering luxury items, give you guys some insight from a user and a buyer that perhaps help you make you a better decision while you're selecting your next sling bag. See you soon and take care. Bye-bye.